What are glassings? Glassings are the most common category of what you might call fist loading. Somebody takes something hand size, puts it in their hand in order to throw a more powerful punch. So they're not just throwing their hand at you, they're throwing their hand with something in it. Statistically, the most common object will be a glass or a bottle, usually a beer bottle. They're all over restaurants, bars. Personally, I've seen cue balls used, billiard balls. There's the same idea. The guy gets enraged, he grabs the closest, heaviest thing he can find, like a billiard ball, and he uses it to make the force of his blow stronger and cause more damage. Now, why do you need this kind of uh, training? Because unlike what you see in movies and television, you are statistically most likely to be hit by a common object like this. Not a samurai sword, not a K-bar that the Marine Corps Commando is carrying, but something that is everywhere in your restaurants and your bars. Let's review some concepts about the flinch reflex. Flinching is a natural hardwired occurrence. It's a defensive mechanism that's hardwired into your brain. That means you're not going to be able to turn it off. And it happens when a stimulus is introduced into your field of vision too quickly. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's been a lot of research done uh, on flinching in the last few years. Some of it's very good. But I want to simplify the idea and make it a lot easier to understand. From my point of view, basically there's two kinds of flinches. One is very useful for self-defense and one is very counterproductive. It's going to make the attack worse. And this is the kind of flinch that most people have happen to them when they're being attacked up close like this in something quick like a punch. Now the problem is, is the first flinch that we're talking about is probably related to a blink reflex. So when a stimulus is introduced, this kind of action happens. Your head turns away, your chin comes up, you tend to reach, and you're gonna probably try to move backwards. All the things you must not do if somebody tries to punch you, or worse yet, hit you upside the head with a beer bottle. Now the other kind of flinch is the kind that happens when there's a more um, unknown stimulus, usually a loud sound. Something like this happens. The person's weight naturally drops, their chin comes down, their shoulders come up, and their hands come up in this kind of guarding. Uh, fashion. Now, there's no real way to tell which one you're going to do. Your brain interprets stimulus in different ways, but through training I think you can cultivate this. By cultivating I mean make it more of a habit for your body and your brain to do one as opposed to the other. We definitely cannot have this kind of blink reflex. You're going to get hit and all the ideas of how to block punches break down because you're going to have a flinch. Which kind of flinch can largely be determined by the kind of training you do. All right, we've talked about the idea that in many, many real-world self-defense weapon attacks, the person doesn't realize he's being attacked with a weapon until after. Combining that with the idea that you're going to have a flinch reflex, whether you like it or not, depending on how quickly he moves and how much distance between you. Having more time to be able to see with your visual field what he's doing tends to, to reduce the flinch reflex. So as we go through longer and larger weapons, the flinch reflex will be less and less of a factor. But in close range fighting here, when we're talking about the speed of his arm, like it or not, you're going to flinch. Coupled with the idea that you may not know what's in his hand, you're going to have to treat this like a punch. Remember, the trajectory of his arm, whether he's going to hit you with his hand, he's going to hit you with a bottle, even the slashing action of a knife is basically moving in the same trajectory. That means you can respond to it in the same way. Let's take a look. So when he winds up to hit me and I get my flinch response, I'm going to cover my head in the same way and enter. If I have an idea, maybe I saw him pick up the bottle in the corner of my eye and he's coming down to more of a hammering motion, I may be able to contour my shell to try to get a more of a sliding effect and make sure I'm covered on this side. But we can basically treat this the same way as the punch. So as he swings, I have to jam that attack and you can see how naturally my arm is going to end up overhooking this. Now, many times he wants to use this weapon on me. His natural reflex is going to be to try to pull this arm out. At this point, that's the chance to give him a combat also to Garrett that's going to smash his head on the ground. Now there's different ways to do this. We're going to do the street or combat also to get it.